Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, first of all, we will discuss the method of intervals for solving quadratic inequality. Now suppose we have to solve the inequality x minus x1 the whole into x minus x2 the whole into x minus x3 the whole and so on up to x minus xn minus 1 the whole into x minus xn the whole is less than 0 where x1, x2, x3 and so on up to xn are distinct to real numbers. Then first of all we will assume that xn is greater than xn minus 1 is greater than and so on is greater than x3 is greater than x2 is greater than x1. Now we will get these points. On the real number line, and consider a polynomial f of x is equal to x minus x1 the whole into x minus x2 the whole into x minus x3 the whole and so on into x minus xn minus 1 the whole into x minus xn the whole. Now here we have drawn a number line in which we have plotted these points. Now in this number line, we will start with the positive sign from the right towards the left. Also from the number line, you can see that for all x greater than xn, All these expressions are positive. Hence, for x greater than xn, we have f of x greater than 0. That is, f of x is positive. Now, let us discuss the second case. When x is lying between xn minus 1 and xn, then for this case, all the expressions except x minus xn will be positive. This means f of x will be less than 0. That is, for this case, f of x is negative, which is denoted by this interval. That is, if x is lying between xn minus 1 and xn, then f of x will be less than 0. Similarly, we can discuss it by taking x in some other intervals. Now let us recall the method of intervals and this is the first step. On the number line, the numbers x1, x2 and so on up to xn are arranged in the increasing order of the magnitude, then we will put the positive sign in the interval to the right of the largest number. Now here the largest number is xn, so we are putting the positive sign on the right of the largest number. Then in the next interval, that is from right to left, we will place a negative sign and then again the positive sign and then again the negative sign and so on. Now the solution of the inequality that is this inequality that is f of x will be less than 0 in the intervals with negative sign and f of x will be greater than 0 in the intervals with positive sign. 
Now let us discuss this method with the help of an example. Now let us take the inequality x minus 1 the whole into x minus 2 the whole into x minus 3 the whole into x minus 4 the whole is less than 0. Now let f of x is equal to x minus 1 the whole into x minus 2 the whole into x minus 3 the whole into x minus 4 the whole. Now let us plot these points on the number line. So we have plotted these points on the number line in the order of their increasing magnitude. Now here you can see five regions. First is from 4 to infinity, second is from 3 to 4, third from 2 to 3, and fourth region from 1 to 2, and the fifth region from 1 to minus infinity. Now starting from the extreme right, we will put the positive sign on the right of the greatest number, and here the greatest number is 4. So we will put a positive sign here, then a negative sign towards the left, and then positive again, then negative, and then again positive. Now in the region with positive signs, f of x is greater than 0, that is f of x is greater than 0, when x belongs to the open interval 4 to infinity union, the open interval 2 to 3 union, the open interval 1 to minus infinity. And f of x will be less than 0 in the region with negative sign that is f of x is less than 0 when x belongs to the open interval 3 to 4 union, the open interval 1 to 2. And now let us discuss maximum and minimum values. Now we know that the graph of f of x is equal to ax square plus bx plus c is of two types. First is it is concave upwards when a is greater than 0 and it is concave downwards when a is less than 0. Now for finding the maximum and minimum values, we have to find the limits within which the value of ax square plus bx plus c will lie for real values of x. Now let us discuss the maximum and minimum values with the help of the graphs. Now for the part 1 when a is greater than 0, then we have drawn the graph of the quadratic function. Now here AB is the minimum value of the function which occurs at the vertex. So we can write that the minimum value AB is equal to 4AC minus B square whole upon 4A which occurs at the vertex where the value of x is equal to minus b over 2a, that is the distance OA. Now, in the second case when a is less than 0, then we have drawn the graph of the quadratic function. Now here, the maximum value of the function that is the maximum value AB is equal to 4AC minus B square whole upon 4A which occurs at the vertex 
where the value of x is equal to minus b upon 2a, that is the distance OB. Now let us discuss it theoretically. Now f of x will be maximum or minimum at the vertex, that is where the value of x is minus b upon 2a, therefore f of minus b upon 2a will be equal to a into minus b upon 2a whole square plus b into minus b over 2a the whole plus c which is further equal to ab square upon 4a square minus b square upon 2a plus c and on solving this will give 4ac minus b square all upon 4a. Therefore, when a is greater than 0, the minimum value of the function f of x is 4ac minus b square over 4a and the maximum value of the function in the case of a is less than 0 is also the same. And now let us discuss quadratic fraction. Now the quadratic fraction is of the form ax square plus bx plus c all upon px square plus qx plus r where a, b, c, p, q and r are the constants and a and b are not equal to zero. Now let us discuss it with the help of an example. And here, if x be real, root out the value of 2x square minus 2x plus 4, whole upon x square minus 4x plus 3, cannot lie between minus 7 and 1. Now let us start with its solution. Let y is equal to 2x square minus 2x plus 4 all upon x square minus 4x plus 3. Now by cross multiplying this implies y into x square minus 4x plus 3 the whole is equal to 2x square minus 2x plus 4. And further on solving this implies y minus 2 the whole into x square minus 2 into 2y minus 1 the whole into x plus 3y minus 4 the whole is equal to 0. Now this is the quadratic equation in x. And also it is given that x is real. So since x is real, therefore the discriminant d will be greater than or equal to 0. This implies b square minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0. Now, Put in the values of B, A and C, we get minus 2 into 2y minus 1 the whole, this whole square minus 4 into y minus 2 the whole into 3y minus 4 the whole is greater than equal to 0, which implies 4 into 4y square plus 1 minus 4y the whole minus 4 into 3y square minus 10y plus 8 the whole is greater than or equal to 0. Now dividing 3 out by 4 and further solving it gives 4y square plus 1 minus 4y minus 3y square plus 10y minus 8 is greater than or equal to 0. And solving, this implies y square plus 6y minus 7 is greater than or equal to 0, which further gives y plus 7 the whole into y minus 1 the whole is greater than or equal to 0. Now we can solve this inequality by the method of intervals, which we have discussed earlier. So we 
we have drawn a number line and then we have given the intervals by using the method of intervals. Now let y plus 7 the whole into y minus 1 the whole is f of x. So f of x will be greater than or equal to 0 in the region that is in the intervals with positive signs. Therefore, the solution of the given inequality is y belongs to semi-open interval minus infinity to minus 7 union semi-closed interval 1 to infinity. That is, within this range f of x will be greater than or equal to 0. Now let us discuss the quadratic inequalities in fractions. Now we have already learned how to solve the inequalities of the type x minus a the whole into x minus b the whole into x minus c the whole into x minus d the whole is less than 0 or is greater than 0 where a, b, c, d are the constants. Now let us learn how to solve the inequalities of the type x minus 2 over x plus 2 that is x minus 2 whole upon x plus 2 is greater than 4x minus 5 whole upon 6x minus 3 now the range of the variable x in this inequality will take all values of x except x is equal to minus 2 and x is equal to 3 by 6. So here we cannot cross multiply that is we cannot multiply both sides by the LCM x plus 2 the whole into 6x minus 3 the whole until we are sure that x plus 2 the whole into 6x minus 3 the whole is a positive quantity. For this reason, we will not cross multiply here. Rather, we will solve this question with another method. For this, we will take all the terms of the given inequality on the left side that is x minus 2 whole upon x plus 2 the whole minus 4x minus 5 whole upon 6x minus 3 the whole is greater than 0 and then we will take the LCM of the denominators that is x plus 2 the whole into 6x minus 3 the whole in the denominator and in the numerator it will be x minus 2 the whole into 6x minus 3 the whole minus 4x minus 5 the whole into x plus 2 the whole is greater than 0. Now in solving the numerator, we get 2x square minus 18x plus 16 whole upon x plus 2 the whole into 6x minus 3 the whole is greater than 0. Now, taking 2 common from the numerator and taking 6 common from the factor 6x minus 3 in the denominator, we get 2 into x square minus 9x plus 8 the whole whole upon x plus 2 the whole into 6 into x minus 3 by 6 that is 1 by 2 the whole is greater than 0. Now on solving this implies x square minus 9x plus 8 whole upon 3 into x plus 2 the whole into x minus 1 by 2 the whole is greater than 0. Now multiplying throughout by 3 and then factorizing the numerator we get x minus 1 the whole into x minus 8 the whole whole upon 
x plus 2 the whole into x minus 1 by 2 the whole is greater than 0. Now let this inequation be a. So now multiplying both sides of a by x plus 2 whole square into x minus 1 by 2 whole square which is a positive quantity for the x under consideration we get x minus 1 the whole into x minus 8 the whole into x plus 2 whole square into x minus 1 by 2 whole square whole upon x plus 2 the whole into x minus 1 by 2 the whole is greater than 0 which implies x minus 1 the whole into x minus 8 the whole into x plus 2 the whole into x minus 1 by 2 the whole is greater than 0. Now this inequality can be solved by the method of intervals which we have discussed earlier. Now from these two inequalities we can see that the solution of x minus a the whole into x minus b the whole all upon x plus c the whole into x minus d the whole is greater than 0 is same as the solution of x minus a the whole into x minus b the whole into x minus c the whole into x minus d the whole is greater than 0. So in this session you have learned about method of intervals, maximum and minimum values, quadratic fractions and quadratic inequalities in fractions. So this completes our session. Hope you all have enjoyed the session.